And we're back with Off the Press with Tunde Kalawali. Tunde, it's good to have you join us this morning via phone. Thanks for having me, my sister. All right. Hope you had a lovely night. Very well, thank you. Kofi is also here with us. Mm. All right. uh, Kofi, my brother. Hope it wasn't too hectic getting to the office this morning. <laughs> nice. Well, we thank God we, we're here. <laughs> Thanks for your time, sir. Mm. All right, Tunde Kalawale, let's take a quick look at the leadership now, uh, leadership amongst other papers. Federal government chides the United States Embassy, United Kingdom over security alert. That's boldly written on the leadership. Underneath it says its attempt to disrupt Nigeria's peace and stability. Oh, really? Service chiefs revive uh, joint operation, dismantle roadblocks, increase presence on highways and streets. UN alerts of plot to abduct humanitarian workers in Burnu. And we know that there's been a t an attack on, you know, the humanitarian, the United Nations facility at the FCT. So I really don't know uh, how and why. But of course, Tunde Kolawoli will be here to share his thoughts. A Tom Dumb article as Tunibu tackles Obasaki over breakup comment. Power disruption looms as federal government directs Gensco to reduce generation. And just before we move away from the leadership, we'll have more interesting headlines on the leadership. And it says, like in 2019, court nullifies all APC primaries in Rivers. Senate to name Women's Center after Mariam Babangida. Of course, you want to remember the better life. Vice President Yemo Sibadro, Jonathan Ganduje moved to strengthen office of deputy. Central Bank of Nigeria targets 100% cashless economy and flood 1.4 million displaced, 612 dead. Very saddening. 12, 21 states get relief materials. These are some of the headlines you find this morning on the leadership. Let's take the stories on the front page of the nation. Scarcity, petrol ex depot price rises to 178 naira per litre. With the riders there, queues spread in Lagos filling stations are stock sufficient for 24,000, uh, uh, rather 24.82 days. Uh, NMDP RA will sell fuel for 200 litre uh, naira per litre in southwest, says Ipman. NMPCL depots empty uh, uh, the riders to that story, like we said during the top trending segment. Or Tom, Benway Elders withdraw support for Atiku. Uh, he's following the footsteps of his uh, political leader, uh, Yenso Mwike. <laughs> Kogi Bayelsa Imo governorship polls fixed for November 11, 2023. Flooding, climate change hurting Nigeria, says Buhari. All right, and the EFCC go to go after lawyers and bankers for aiding financial crimes. Agency plans upward salary review for Buhari governors CJN uh, and others. That's uh, should be talking about the revenue mobilization allocation and fiscal uh, commission. Court nullifies Rivers APC primaries. Here we go again. Um, <laughs> three in race for a kitty speaker. Uh, OAU students death or show CJ fumes over uh, Dedoni's absent or absence in court and. Uh, Oyetola leads supporters in 9.2 kilometer walk for Tinubu Shetima. Headlines on the front page of the nation. Well, we'll move away from the nation, and that's because we have uh, the Sun newspaper this morning. The Sun, or the Daily Sun, I beg your pardon, says fuel scarcity spreads and transport fares soar. That's uh, boldly written Lagos, Abuja paralyzes, Ipman blames depot. Federal government names building after late Ikea Zoo's SAN. Kanu, why we transferred 21 justices, appeal court is quoted to say. And uh, you find we won't support same fate ticket, support groups declare. Nigeria ready to become global vaccine production distribution hub. That's what our president, Mohamed Buhari, is saying. I resign if anyone can prove I promise to make him my successor. Wiki. <laughs> Federal government deploys security alert by foreign embassies. For fortify your environment, can't tell churches 
Senate federal government clash over multi billionaire employment scheme. Uh, some of the headlines you find this morning on the Daily Sun newspaper. Moving on from the Daily Sun uh, newspaper, as Messi has just read there, uh, let's go over to the next one, which happens to be the punch. Jumbo severance package. Buhari Oshibaji others to get 63 billion naira. Pensioners kick. It's a front page lead story uh, on the punch. The writers to that. Ministers, governors, commissioners, National Assembly members, special advisors to benefit. It's inhumane. Uh, or inhuman uh, pensioners who worked for 35 years, not paid for 10 years, according to the union. Economists, slam politicians say they are insensitive, uh, the RMFAC to review remuneration. Um, Tinubu Obi unfold agenda for women, Atiku absent, uh, flooding, FG plans intervention fund, 612 killed, right? How many weeks since the flood started? Uh, British PM Sunak sets economic stability agenda. He has his work cut out. Uh, Duchess of Sussex excited over 43% Nigerian ancestry. This is uh, Meghan Markle. They've already started giving her Nigerian names on social media. Fuel scarcity grounds Lagos, Ogun, Abuja, commuters stranded. Uh, Lagos Ibarra Bridge joins reopen. Uh, driver slam Julius Berger. Maxed gunmen abduct Lagos motorists in broad daylight. And uh, by Elsa Imo Kogi, governorship polls hold November 11. That's something for INEC to do ahead of the general elections next year. And um, at this juncture, we'll bring in uh, Tunde Kolawale, legal practitioner, and our list this morning. Uh, 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 Mr. Kolawale, let's start with the, um, the severance package for the <laughs> aforementioned you know, public officials, starting from the president and the vice president. Total package of 63 billion naira. Um, it relieves one to ask the question, are these guys even listening to Nigerians at all? I mean, we see the Minister of Finance, uh, usually on the papers or on television, all she does is to read to Nigerians how much is being owed and to read to Nigerians how much the country is going to borrow to fund its budget. But uh, <laughs> it seems that uh, Nigerians are not being well, heard. It's, Over um, it is not all right, we seem to be having some uh, network issues with Tunde Kolawali right there, and I uh, will try our very best to get back to him as soon as possible. But Mercy, this particular uh, story, it's not just in the punch, if we can show the front page of the punch uh, so our viewers can see what we're talking about. Mercy, it's not just in the, in the punch, also it's uh, contained in the in the, um, the other papers as well, uh, the nation, you know, put up a, a different slant to it, you know, upward salary review is just a few months ago. The judiciary is not left, uh, left out as well. Um, I mean, so what do you say this is insensitive to Nigerians in, in the light of the economic times we're in when we should be cutting down? Okay, I'm told we have Tunde Kolaole uh, back with us. Uh, uh, Barista, are you there? Yeah, Can you hear us? Working. All right. Yes, yes, please I'm go. Back. Yes, mm -hmm. please go. So, as, as I was saying, as I was saying, mm -hmm. Nigerians um, have been crying again. Little Mongols are most of money that politicians are watching themselves. And they don't live on the, I mean, they don't wait until they leave office before they get this money. They prepare for themselves and then pay into their respective accounts. Whereas those who have worked for 35 years or they are about as police, I mean, as a civil servant, they never get paid even sometimes 10 years after they have left office. And you will recollect that um, the Court of Appeal recently made a ruling castigating the politicians for the humongous amount of money that they give to themselves when they do very little. At most, they work for about eight years before they get this uh, money. Now, the truth of the matter is that uh, no matter how much we cry, or no matter how much noise we make about these things, until the laws are amended, because the politicians have codified um, this humongous amount of money that they get, we do have it in the constitution, 
we do have our pensions and, and laws in some of these states uh, of the federation. So the Nigerian people and the other pensioners in particular are able to compare the different houses of assembly and then the national assembly to amend the constitution and also amend some other stand laws of the land. The politicians will continue to pay themselves this jumbo amount of money until such laws are amended. Um, I beg your pardon. Today, Kola Wale, just as a follow-up to this, uh, you probably took out, you know, the question out of my mouth already, or my, you know, my thoughts exactly, that this is actually constitutionally guaranteed. And don't you think that it's time that we change, you know, the inherited structure that the political elites inherited from, you know, our colonial masters, for instance, or from a prime minister's are uh, very able to claim, you know, public duty cost allowance, which is currently set at a maximum of one hundred and fifteen thousand pounds annually. And we understand that shortly uh, Liz Truss has, you know, resigned her position as prime minister. And people said, oh, she's entitled to it. And that's it. So is it not high time we, you know, renounce some of these structures, look for structures that suit our country, what is doable, what is applicable to the Nigerian society? Well, that has always been my call. I have said it time to cast number that uh, this democracy that we practice, that it is expensive and that it is callous and that it is not sustainable and that it is a woman that uh, if you elect less than one percent of the population will uh, corner to themselves a very huge sums of money for maintenance of civilian packages and for all manners of entitlement that they do get and that even some of us have been advocating that the National Assembly, for example, should be a unicameral one, just one National Assembly. Both the Senate and the House of Reps should be marked together. And that there could be just one Senator per state, and maybe two representatives per state. And then when you come to the state level, you could have just maybe one um, the House of I mean, the House of Assembly member representing about two or three local governments. And then you also make those things a part-time affair. Because when you look at the work of the legislator, which is the oversight function, which is to represent their constituency, which is to make laws uh, for the federation and for the state and all that, these are not laws that require that you should six twenty four seven or be in office in uh, 365 days of the year. They are jobs that could be done as the on a part-time basis. And in fact, in the past, it has been done on the part-time basis in Nigeria before, especially in the First Republic and then before the First uh, Republic. But because politics is not taken as a vocation and not uh, something you do as public service, they have gone into the laws, embedded some of these uh, GC packages into the Constitution and also to the retirement uh, laws of the respective states and all that that it is not difficult for them and then for the Nigerian people to get them to amend those um, uh, laws. Besides, you will agree with me, the resources of the different states are not the same. Like, for example, the well producing states uh, get more federal allocation. They are also able to raise more money as internally generated resources. And then you compare states like Kiki and Kuala states, which are not too much endowed in some of the things that I've mentioned. This, 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 the House of Rep, I mean, the um, people in the nation, the House of Assembly in those places and all that, who insist and want to take the same money that the people in Lagos, for example, or Rivers, or even Kaduna, and when the environment and the resources are available to the different states are not the same. I've also been advocating, for example, that uh, we need to do away with all these multiple party systems. Let us have just a one party state, uh, which you can even call the uh, Nigerian People's uh, Congress, in which people who emerge as leaders in the labor union, in the students' movement, 
in the market association, in the transport unions, and what have no. We have their representatives in the House of Assembly and the Senate, I mean, in the Senate, the National Assembly, and even the Army and the police and others will also have representatives in there, so that they will be the one to sit down and decide how the resources of the nation is going to be managed, and then how the laws are going to be promulgated or whatever is going to be done uh, for the country. With this, the advantage is this. The people coming from these different constituencies already know where the shoes are pinching uh, their different constituencies. Furthermore, they are experts in their different areas. They will be able to advise either the National Assembly or the House Assembly on what is to be done, especially when budgets have been prepared for the different sectors and segments of society. But just like you said, we have copied all line and thinker what is happening in the United States of America, what is happening in Britain, when our environment, in fact, do differ, is totally different from those places. Say, for example, in Nigeria, the monarchy, which uh, is not a ceremonial uh, institution to me, uh, we pay them jumbo amount of salary on the, on the monthly basis. In fact, the monarchy takes 10% of whatever allocation is given to the respective local government under their jurisdiction. But you and I know that the monarchy as of today is a very redundant institution. If either we abolish the monarchy or we find a way to incorporate them into governance so that the amount of money, also that the money, the salary, allowance and the movement that we make to them will not just be a mere body or a waste on the taxpayers of this country. Our scientists, political scientists, philosophers, historians, human rights activists and economists and all that needs to sit down and work out a political paradigm that is to our environment instead of this wholesale importation of Western democracy. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Tunde Kolawale, for that. Let's move on to some other stories. Um, uh, the situation with the uh, the People's Democratic Party is well captured by the nation newspaper. Uh, yesterday was Wiki saying he will not campaign for Atiku, and today is Otom, who is saying that uh, he's withdrawing himself, and also Benue elders uh, withdrawing their support for Atiku Abubakar. I mean, while the man is taking a leave of absence from the country, uh, going uh, abroad, and some suspect he's going to treat himself. Uh, what is your take on the latest twist in the People's Democratic Party ahead of the next general elections, particularly the presidential poll? Well, it would appear to me that Elijah Fikwa Waka has played into the hands of his enemies. You know, he went to the north recently, I did not come work at him, where he made a statement that. Um, uh, the northerners, they are, that he is an outside, that he is a full and a person. And that the northerners don't need an Igbo presidency, that they don't need the Yoruba presidency, that it is in Abubakar that they should vote for being a full and a person who adequately represented their interest. He also added that he is a fan and Nigerian. He has uh, children who have Igbo blood in them. He has children who have Yoruba blood in them and what have them. Uh, that statement hasn't gone down too well with the Nigerian people because ethnicity, tribalism, and hegemony and regionalism has been um, led into it. So if I were Tikwa Ubaka, I would not have made that kind of a statement, especially when I do know that the party on whose platform I'm running is already not too comfortable with him coming from the north to aspire to lead the country again after another Nazana who has a uh, kind of um, done an eight years. That may be the reason why we can, and also Tom and Co. are now saying, ah, maybe what these people have been saying about this man, being an ethnic resentist, uh, may be true. Uh, with that, a large article worker would appear to have shot himself in the foot. But again, I would want to appeal to the other members of the PDP. Autumn and then the River State Governor, Governor Wiki, they should think in the overall interest of the Nigerian people, not whatever or oh, mistakes and large article of welcome they make it today. Like I've always said, it is too dangerous to have just one party uh, to choose from come 2023 election. And I said there is a question in the PDP. If the PDP is in disarray, 
like all the other parties are in this area and all that, Nigerians electorate will be met, will be met with a state accomplice in which they will have only the APC to choose from. And when you have only the APC to choose from, as an electorate or as a people and all that, that means we have no choice. That means we are back to square one. That means we merely rubber stamp all that the APC have done in the last seven and years, years or year about. And you and I do know that the performance of the APC in governance in the last seven and a half, eight years and all that, in my humble opinion, is mediocre, is decisive, is decisive, it is a irresponsible. And that uh, they have refused to give us the fundamental thing that the Constitution prescribes that good governance should only be about. That is security and peace, uh, food security, physical security and what have you, good representation, uh, employment, and proper management of the resources of the nation. Look at what is happening with the health sector. Look at the uh, discovery that has been made of people creating their own pipelines and then uh, taking oil out of the country to sell. Look at the number of refineries, illegal refineries that have been discovered in the Niger Delta. And look at the parallel state of our infrastructure. Where I say this, except we go back to the proposal earlier on made, which is to have a one-party state in Nigeria People's Congress, and everybody, every segment of the society will be represented. <laughs> the army, the police, the market women, the students, and all that. Then we should strengthen all the leading strong political parties like the PDP, the APC, and ABC, so that Nigerians will have a choice. If you are not comfortable with the character that one party is uh, uh, putting them as a uh, governing candidate, as a rep candidate, as a presidential candidate, then you have some other eighteen alternatives to choose from. And that will also engender competition. And when there is competition, like we have in the Second Republic, it always looked to it always looked, I mean, a little good governance. With what I have seen on ground today, the other parties are in disarray. The FTC seems to be the only party that is probably ready for this election. And you must add to this that the APC had the resources of the nation at its disposal to fight that election. They also have the security forces, the police, the army, the DSS, and all that. They are also in command of the critical height of the government. By the time they deploy all these things, all these resources, all right. against, uh, the, against um, a PDP that is in the array, then uh, Nigerian people will have no authority than to end up with the APC as the next government. Come 2023, again... Tunde Kola Wale, as we coast the conversation, uh, you know, down, let's quickly take a look at the leadership newspaper. It talks about the federal government's yeah. disapproval, has expressed strong disapproval of the security alert recently issued on Nigeria by the United Kingdom and the United States, according to them, unverified. Your thoughts? Well, my thought is that uh, if I were the federal government, I will listen to what the American people are saying. The American people are not uh, alarmist. Uh, they hardly will raise that kind of an alarm if they haven't got some security pillars that certain people are planning very sinister and dastardly attacks on the Nigerian people. Recollect that immediately the uh, American people raise this alarm. One of the security officers has also said that, look, they are on top of the situation they are monitoring. That they themselves are in the past. Especially the DSS are in the past. Raise an alarm. The police have also raised an alarm. That uh, they are suspecting. That maybe during uh, either the Malut, during Christmas, or during one event or the other, certain persons are planning an attack. So, if the American people, who have more resources to gather intelligence information, are raising this alarm, what I would expect the federal government to do, is to liaise with the American counterparts and uh, get them to furnish them with the details of where this alarm, I mean, where this attack is likely to come from, and probably even solicit for a joint uh, action against those who are planning the, the, the attack. Look at the whole of West Africa today, Mali, Senegal, Niger, and all that. The jihad is the Islamic fundamentalist, are killing and maiming innocent people. And the government in all those cases have not been able to do much about it. Even though I will concede that in the recent times, um, spreads of attacks, 
spread of the kidnapping in the country and reduce them a little while. We give credit to the people in government, but we also say that when the counterpart government like the America, who are not given to frivolity, raises this kind of alarm, it is advisable that the Nigerian government should listen to them and act and get the thing accordingly. All right. Uh, interesting. There's a lot to look at um, uh, this morning, Tunde Okolo Ole, including uh, the fate of uh, the APC in River State. It's uh, for them. Deja vu, a case of affliction rising the second time. Uh, we don't have all the day, but just in a sentence, from your point of view as a legal practitioner, uh, if a court is barring a party or nullifying the primaries, is that the end of the road for the party in as far as this uh, next general election is concerned? Very shortly and very quickly, please. Well, it's, uh, it might not. The family nullify whatever family they can be called. Apply with the electoral, and they didn't get any to support and all that. There's always a notion to go to court to set aside whatever decisions that the law court may have made. So the people in River State or there about who rush to court and file an application for those decisions to set aside, and then for the court to give an order for their candidate to be able to run. All right. Tunde Kolore, thank you so much for your time, and we look forward to having you again next week. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure speaking with you. I'm being on the platform with you. Thank you. You have a great day. Thank you. Too. you. Thank you. All right, uh, we will take a short break. When we return, we dive straight into our first major conversation. And of course, uh, we have two very important topics ahead on The Breakfast. Stay with us. <laughs>